Thank you very much, Chris. Um, right, we uh, buckle up, everyone, because I'm going to try and do a, uh, a three-hour workshop in eight minutes. Um, the, um, the sheet you have in front of you, hopefully, is the brand discovery board that I use when we do a workshop. Fantastic. I had a fantastic one to my last week, and you helped me um, move some of these ideas around. So thank you very much. Um, the idea here is to come up with an identifying characteristic, something that distinguishes you from the other people who do what you do. Um, and it starts with the what. So at the top of section one, we go through the numbers. Um, <coughs> feel free to scribble on this, and if you want to do this one-to-one, -one, then by all means. But what are you? Who are you? Who are you doing it for? Why are you doing it? Where do you do it? And how long have you been doing it? Those, those are the basics. But the what is a really important one. Because my wife is not an accountant, she's a forensic accountant. My friend Rory Terrell is not an osteopath, he's a preventative osteopath. What is the operator word that you can put in front of your job title that will distinguish you from the other people who your, your, your competitors basically? It's called the operator word, so it's worth finding out. Um, I won't go into more, more of the W's. Can you give me a sort of two minute warning when you get there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so the next section too is your ideal customer. That's when we profile and create a persona for your ideal customer, your champagne referral, the person who walks in or rings up or drops an email and you think, yes, that's going to be the best possible project we can do. It's going to be fun, it's going to be profitable, there'll be more of them. Who does that look like for you? So again, we go through and profile that person because that gets really useful later on when you want to find more people like that. Then, Section three is where it gets really fun. Um, this is where we bring to life visually the, the personality that you'd like other people to see when they're introduced to you. I've just realized I'm talking about there. Um, what you want other people to see when they're introduced to you. So um, if your business was a famous person, what thing would it be? What age would your business brand be in the minds of the people you want to speak uh, to reach? What color? Color is great. It, it, we all have red for danger, green for go. Um, so what colour would your brand be? That might not necessarily be the logo. It's a different thing to consider, as Esther will tell you. Um, if you were in form of transport, what would you be? Uh, these are the, the examples from someone I've this with quite recently. If you were a musical genre or artist, who would you be? In the minds of those, that's so once, think about that ideal customer. Who do they want to see or feel as though they're aligning with? Is it Bruce Springsteen? Um, um, what country? We all have a different perspective, of, um, perception of the value of culture in certain countries. Um, Germany is very different from Brazil. So what, what do you want people to see when they encounter your pictures? What publication would you be? Would you be National Geographic or Viz? <laughs> what level of humor do you want to, to, to portray? Um, TV show. High street store, animal, sport, beverage. Are you a boozy one? Are you a boozy business or are you a soft drink? Um, what movie would you be? And finally, slightly tongue in cheek, what body part would you want your business to be perceived as? Some some are almost certainly going to be eyes. I have brains and I have hands, obviously, but that's entirely up to you. And when we're working through this, and this is done over two 90-minute sessions, um, ideally 24 hours apart, so that people can sleep on it. I record all of these meetings, they're all done on Zoom, I get them transcribed, and this brand wall gets filled out and can shared as a PDF as well. Um, the, the little box there, as you can see, the key words and phrases, is quite often somebody will say something, a penny will drop, or a phrase will come to mind, and um, and it has to be captured, so we capture that during that. And I sometimes go back and fill those keywords in from the recording because you always miss something. <coughs> and then we talk a little bit about the brand story. Um, and with this, I use Star Wars as an analogy. Um, has anyone not seen Star Wars? Oh. You must. Yeah. Oh, my God. Get out of there. For those for you two, the, the basic story of, um, of Star Wars is the hero is Luke Skywalker. The challenge is to um, 
blow up the Death Star, um, the villain is Darth Vader, the guides are Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, and the outcome is the defeat of the evil empire. No, no, you don't have to watch that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the key here is that you're the guide in this story, not the hero. And so that little section that we go through um, helps, um, helps you capture what it is that you can do to be perceived as that guide in that hero story. And then the last bit is the brand tree. This is where we start bringing this all together. So it's the brand name, if it's staying the same, or you, if it's not. The brand essence, which is the three little words I asked you to write down. Has anyone got some suggestions they'd like to share? Three words, okay. Esther? Joyful three. Yes. Collaborative. Yep. Brave. Yep. Creative. Lovely. There are the, that's great. Does anyone know, do you know? No, not it. Um, Knight's brand essence of three words is athletic, authentic performance. Sorry, other way around. Authentic, athletic performance is their brand essence. It's an internal phrase, you won't see it on a box. That gets given to the marketing team who come up with um, just do it, and that becomes a tick, and it's globally recognized. So um, that's, that's the, the brand essence. Those three words have a different job to do in each case. How am I doing? Two minutes remaining. Right, okay. I'll avoid it. Thank you, Rob. Um, then we go on to do the brand strap line, which is effectively um, if your brand name does not give a hint about what you do, that's where we make you drop the hints. Um, we then expand that to a brand sentence and a brand description. But crucially, this bit is really, really difficult sometimes, but it's really important. Sarah's done this with me before. Um, what makes you different? What makes you better and what makes you remarkable? You've heard me bang about, bang on about that week after week. Because if you're not different, you're invisible. If you're not perceived as better, your customers will be uh, promiscuous. And if you're not remarkable for some reason, that nobody will talk about you. So that's what we explore there. And, it, and the penny drops, it's like a sale. Somebody suddenly goes, hey, that's it. Yes. Um, that leads then right down to this identifying characteristic, which is one word or a short phrase that is the hook and the aid memoir for people to bring you back to mind when you need to. Because the single biggest problem for most of us is that at any given time, insufficient numbers of the right people even know we exist. So it's about awareness and recall and engagement. So having a, a strong identifying characteristic really helps. For Disney, it's magic. For Marlborough, it's freedom. For Harley Davidson, it's rebel. So what's your own identifying characteristic? And if you can't get there, I can help with one of the workshops. Thank you very much. We have got two minutes for questions. So Fantastic. Does anyone have any questions for Mark? Does anyone else have three? Oh, yes. Sarah. No, no, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else got three words that they'd like to share about their business? Cool. I put strong, reliable, and progressive. Nice. That's very nice. I've got some. Um, I've got caring, communication, and I cheat by saying all the winning is that two in one. That's good. I'll just yeah, give you yeah. one example of another of a brand, a brand lessons which I developed for a yoga clothing company, um, which became the strap line. It doesn't always become the strap line, but I realized that we had to. Uh, the company was called Kalmia, so it wasn't obvious what they did. So I needed to get yoga in there. I needed to get in that they were a clothing company, and the yoga company was led by this wonderful woman who was gliding around life on casters, top yoga teacher. The whole business was built around her reputation, so it had to be something about Lucy. And I came up with stylish serenity for Sonia. And the stylish job, Stylish does the job for fashion, Serenity does the job for yoga, and personified links it back to Lucy. And they loved it, so that became their strap line. So those, <coughs> those are the three jobs those words need to do for what we're at. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. Uh, why is Since When important? Um, because there are businesses here that are new and others that are about 100 years old. In, so in, why is it important? In some, it, this obviously is not a public document. It's for the babies, for the workshop, really. 
Um, from it becomes the blueprint for everything else you might write, design, compose. But for some businesses, um, longevity is a significant advantage. For others, it's not. But it's just to capture sometimes in, in, for my benefit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.